I've been watching some videos of Sheikh Yasser Qadi, in which he strives to explain and justify Muhammad's marriage to a girl who was too young for a bra. I'll be posting one or two responses later this week, but before I start to critique the claims of Sheikh Yasser Qadi, I wanted to give credit where credit is due. One of the most disturbing trends in Islamic apologetics has been the attempt to rewrite history by arguing that Aisha was older than nine when Muhammad, who was more than 50 years old at the time, spread her legs apart, climbed on top of her, and went cave diving. Side note, there are Muslims who complain whenever I talk about their prophet having sex. So I'm trying to be respectful by using euphemisms. Instead of saying Muhammad had sex with Aisha, I'll say that he put his email in the spam folder, or slayed the bedragon, or cleared out the cobwebs with his womb broom. My Muslim friends in the comments section can let me know if they'd prefer these euphemisms. I have a ton of them. But back to the topic. There are Muslim apologists who insist that Aisha was 14 or 16 or even 18 years old when her prophet voted her hymen off the island. The articles and lectures that are meant to prove that Aisha was older than nine are filled with outright lies about what the Muslim sources say. What do we find when we read Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim and Sunan Abu Daud? we find that there's some dispute as to whether Aisha was six or seven years old when Muhammad married her, but that there's no dispute concerning her age when she was taken to Muhammad's house so that he could do a little interior decorating. Sahih al-Bukhari, 5133, narrated Aisha that the Prophet wrote the marriage contract with her when she was six years old, and he consummated his marriage when she was nine years old, and then she remained with him for nine years, i.e. till his death. Sahih al-Bukhari, 5158, narrated Urwa. The Prophet wrote the marriage contract with Aisha while she was six years old, and consummated his marriage with her while she was nine years old, and she remained with him for nine years, i.e. till his death. Sahih Muslim, 3481, it was narrated from Aisha that the Prophet married her when she was seven years old, and she was taken to him as a bride when she was nine years old, and she took her dolls with her. He died when she was 18 years old. Sahih Muslim 3482. It was narrated from Aisha that the Messenger of Allah married her when she was six years old, and consummated the marriage with her when she was nine years old, and he died when she was 18 years old. Sunan Abu Dawud, 2121, Aisha narrated, The Messenger of Allah married me while I was a girl of seven years. Suleiman, one of the narrators, said, or six, and he consummated the marriage when I was a girl of nine. The Muslim sources are clear and consistent. Aisha was nine years old when Muhammad hid his magic wand inside the Chamber of Secrets. So why do so many Muslim apologists lie about this? Well, many Muslim apologists know that they can get away with lying because of what I call Islam's 99-1 rule. If you're a Muslim apologist and you're speaking to a hundred people about Islam and you make something up, at least 99 of those 100 people are going to accept what you say without bothering to critically examine your claims. The one rare person who does go to the Muslim sources to investigate what you've said and who realizes that you were lying can then be silenced by the 99 who mindlessly accepted what they were told. The 99 can laugh at the one, mock him, shout him down, call him a bigot, call him an Islamophobe, or even physically attack him. The point is that if you build a big enough mob, the mob can silence anyone who disagrees with you. This has been Islam's method of choice since the time of Muhammad. Due to the prevalence of the 99-1 rule in Islamic apologetics, it's always refreshing to find a Muslim scholar who's willing to call out and condemn Muslim apologists who lie to their readers and viewers. To his credit, Sheikh Yasser Qadi brings this up even as he's defending Muhammad's relationship with Aisha. He could have given his view without labeling the age revisionists liars. But instead, he said this. There is absolutely nothing wrong, and all Muslims, 
don't apologize for the truth and don't distort the truth. There are, there are Muslims that try to deny this. Oh, he didn't marry Aisha as a young girl. Ya akhi, look, that's not the way forward. We don't lie for the sake of our religion. Astaghfirullah. We have the truth. We're not going to cover up the truth if people are, find it embarrassing. This is the reality. Deal with it. Notice, he tells Muslims to stop lying about the age of Aisha. There are Muslims that try to deny this. Oh, he didn't marry Aisha as a young girl. Ya akhi, look. That's not the way forward. We don't lie for the sake of our religion. Astaghfirullah. Now, this is Sheikh Yasser Qadi. He knows the history of Muhammad better than just about anyone. Based on his lifetime of research, he doesn't believe that there's any room for doubt when it comes to the age of Aisha. He doesn't say, well, I personally think that she was nine years old when Prophet Muhammad وسلم, planted the parsnip. But other scholars disagree with me because the sources just aren't clear. That's not what he says. He says, stop lying about the age of Aisha. Islam doesn't need your lies. Bravo, Sheikh Yasser Qadi. Of course, since the good Sheikh grants the young age of Aisha, we can turn our attention to his attempts to justify Muhammad's twisted game of pelvic pinochle. I'll put links to two of Sheikh Qadi's defense videos in the description box. They're both short. If you'd like a little homework assignment, watch Sheikh Qadi's explanation and see how many problems you can spot. Post your thoughts in the comments section. And keep in mind that this is probably the best defense Islamic scholars have to offer. So if Sheikh Yasser Qadi can't defend Muhammad, sweeping the chimney, Sharpening the pencil, stuffing the muffin, hiding the cannoli, jumping the turnstile, hitting the upvote button, roughing up the suspect, rummaging through the root cellar, searching for pocket change, stumbling down the mine shaft, shampooing the Wookiee, storming the gates of Mordor, or loading the clown into the cannon. Maybe no one can. This is the reality. Deal with it.